getting your kids involved with the diagnostic process of multiple sclerosis is a lot. So us at Lived Health, we're going to take you through some tips. Man, I hate saying tips because it sounds so cheese ball, but we're going to help you out of ways that you can break that dialogue and start communicating with your kids about your MS. Um, so Natalie, how and when did you decide to start talking to your kids about MS? At first, I had no intention of telling them because they were quite young um, at the time. I think my daughter was about five. I just thought I don't need them to know about it. Um, I've always tried to hide it. So in some way, I feel like I was almost forced to tell them because I think when it came, when they were at school um, or play group for my younger one, it was like, that was my time at home to, you know, release the pain because with my MS, it was very, um, it was a very painful, um, you know, time for me because every I was suffering from like neuropathic pain, and it wasn't easy for my um, neurologist to find a painkiller that worked. I kept trying mm -hmm. different ones. I was in a lot of pain. It came to a point that we just stopped using painkillers because they weren't working. So mm -hmm. I used that time at home to just release and like scream or stuff like that. So when my kids came home, I was always hiding it from them. But you know, with kids, they always can sense something is you know up. They're always looking at you and you don't definitely. So it came to a point where, you know, they started asking me questions about it and I just let them ask me questions because, you know, how do you explain MS to kids? There's so much without you going all scientific. This is how it works. Right. So I just I just let yeah. I just let them ask. I always do that because with kids, they know what they want to ask you. I used to fall over quite a lot. Sometimes I'll just joke with them. Like when I fall over, we'll just laugh together. So just kind of take them along with it. And um, when things happen, when you're in pain and they started to be like, oh, um, mommy, um, is it that you can't come with us because you're tired? Or is it because they understand it. Whereas before they'll be upset. Absolutely. I think like for me, my husband and I had the discussion when I was first diagnosed and I told him, I go, look, they're going to see things just like you said. And, and I think that the, the pandemic and lockdown really made their awareness more apparent because they saw things that happened during school hours that they weren't, you know, prior, uh, you know, susceptible to. Mm -hmm. So I remember having that conversation with my husband. I'm like, look, like we just need to be transparent. And I will tell you what, like it has, it has brought my stepson in particular to have so much empathy and so much understanding. But again, I love what you said about presenting it in a way that kids understand because MS is so scientifically technical. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's like, I, I use the analogy of like kind of comparing your body to the central processing unit of a computer. I'm like, well, you know, sometimes when your computer has viruses and has glitches yeah. and isn't functioning properly, I'm like, well, mom's body is kind of like that. And then they're like, oh, like a computer. Like you could see like the light bulb yeah. go on in their head. Um, and it's so funny too. It's like, I, I talked to so many different parents who are like, no, I can't, I can't share and I can't share. Um, but you'd be really, really surprised of the, you know, understanding and the empathy that your kids have, depending on what age, you know what I mean? Mm. How did they take the news when you told them? See, like you were saying, because it's different in age. I think my daughter, she's more, she's more emotional. So she would always show her feelings. Whereas my son, because he was younger, it's strange. He never liked to show that he was upset in front of me. I would always hear it from my mom, my sister, or my dad. I yeah. think if we preface it in... I don't want to say a nonchalant way because there's nothing nonchalant about, you know, the challenges and the struggles that we have living with MS. It's, it's a serious thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I try to play it off. Like what you were saying, you know, falling over and stuff walls in my house come out of nowhere all the time. They move. I swear, <laughs> I swear the walls move. And at first, you know, when I was diagnosed, my kids, my stepkids were uh, seven and eight, but they would see me fall or walk into a wall to the point where I would get a bloody nose or something. And they would freak out. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Oh, are you okay? Let me get you some ice and let me get you a towel. And I had to change how I prefaced the situation and make light of it and just say, man, that wall came out of nowhere. <laughs> You know, and just make it funny. And then yeah. they realized, oh, okay, mom's laughing, so we can laugh too. Yeah. So it took the like the panic and the overwhelming, oh my gosh, I have to fix it. Because kids, believe it or not, they want to feel like they're a part of the solution. But by not communicating what we're going through, that's mm -hmm. not giving them the understanding and the tools of knowledge of what we are going through so they can feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've seen by, you know, sharing 
in in the details that I find appropriate to share with a now 11 and 12 year old. Yeah. Um, but at the time they were seven and eight. So, you know, finding ways to break that ice and, and, you know, make light of it and make it more kid friendly, I think has, has really given them more confidence of being like a part of the whole thing. Like MS in our family is like a, a family unit. It's a family disease completely. Yeah. If you're interested in finding out more about MS, why not subscribe for more of our videos?